Hello and welcome to the Indie Incursion Podcast, your weekly indie games podcast, uh, just naturally all about indie games, considering the fact that I just said that it is an indie games podcast, so not very complex. Yeah, we pretty much just wear that right on our sleeve, you know what I mean? Um, As always, I am one of your hosts. I am the ghost formerly known as as Danny Phantom, um, and uh, no. I'm also <laughs> joined, no, that's not what, you're not going to go with it? No, 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 no. No? no, no okay, no, I'm no. the ghost formerly known as Vaughn Hyde, because uh, Team Cherry hates me, that's, it's a long, it's a long road, okay, we'll just, we'll just go with it, uh, and I am joined by Big Josh Boy. Oh. The the illustrious the... the illustrious big Josh boy, <laughs> yep that's uh that's clearly what I'm known as. Um, I mean, there's not a single name that anybody might know you by other than Big Josh boy. Yeah, I should change my Twitter handle. You should just change your name. I should just legally change my name. <laughs> yeah, the whole name. The just whole name. Just give up on just Josh and be Big Josh boy. Oh, don't worry. I gave up on Josh a long time ago. But every time you enter a room, you have to say the whole thing. You have to say, Big Josh Boy is mm. in the house. Oh, it, oh, and that part? Is that part of my name or is that just my entrance? I mean, if you want to make Is that, that like my last name? name? That's not my... F- I mean, it's, I'm not suggesting that, but it would be a good one. Yeah. It's, okay, so Big Josh Boy. It, do I have a middle name or is Boy the middle name? So the whole thing, now that we've got the in the house part, it's Big Josh Boy, that's your first name. Okay, yeah, yeah. No middle name, and then okay. is in the house. No, that's it. No middle name, but each name has like three words. Nah, I've always thought middle <laughs> names are bullshit anyway. There's just there's no reason to have a middle name. My middle name is Bryce. I, I'm i going to tell you right now, I hope my dad's listening to this. This is a terrible choice. I hate that middle name. <laughs> it throws off my name. I hate it. My name sounds really cool. My name is Vaughn Hyde. It's spelled really cool. It sounds cool. And then you put Bryce in the middle. I was like, that. that's stupid. I hate it. Ah, yeah. What can you do? Sorry. Sorry, bro. That's my origin story in a nutshell, guys. That's why I am so cynical and shit on video games so much is because my middle name is Bryce. Uh, so Thanks, each and every, yeah, right. Each and every week we bring you guys the indie games news. Uh, basically all of it really there's not a massive amount of indie games news considering uh we could not do this daily but we bring you all the indie games news that you guys probably want to know considering you're following an indie games podcast um we talk about some indie games on kickstarter that you guys might want to check out or you just should check out in general unless you're talking about the cow game and then just burn that just don't it shouldn't exist really i'm gonna keep bringing it up because that's the worst ever and of course i ask probing questions of my co-hosts which uh today is just josh it's been just josh for a while he is just the returning that's why he's the illustrious the illustrious josh boy yeah yeah exactly so big josh boy what have you been playing this week that you want to regale me with Ooh. the the vocabulary on this one. Uh, yeah, I'm really trying to get out there just in case I flub some more words. Yeah. <laughs> then I yeah, look yeah. like less of a dumbass. It it outweighs it. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Well, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's showing. It's nice. Uh, anyway, oh, so I've been playing... Um, oh, man, what have I been playing? Oh, uh, so <clears throat> one of the things I didn't talk about but uh, that I have been playing on and off is um, Degrees of Separation. Um, so this is a indie puzzle game uh where it's basically two people it's like an ice ice boy and a fire girl and they're like it's shark boy and lava girl shark boy and lava girl yeah it's basically uh what they were beforehand (laughs) before they got their (laughs) superpowers um so it's it's basically this uh this guy who's part of an ice kingdom one is part of like a fire kingdom so to speak and uh they i don't really understand the story as much because i haven't gone like through the whole entire thing yet but basically it's their kingdoms are like something's happening like some kind of like death to their kingdom or it's like only them and they find each other and they're on this like adventure of like basically going through and kind of finding out where like what is happening to their kingdoms and why it's like being destroyed so to speak and like it doesn't make a lot of sense to be honest you're basically walking through and collecting like scarves um, that you find throughout each world and those scarfs are basically the collectibles that you need to unlock more levels and each one of those scarfs throughout the world is basically a puzzle so you get through and you have to complete some puzzle to 
actually obtain that. And it's uh, the way it works is each character um, is torn to never be able to cross each other's path. So what that basically means is you have your ice guy who everything on his side of the screen is always going to be totally like frosted and the the nature is just all dead whereas on the fire or light side she has basically this this lush world of all these trees that are grown um, and it, it plays into you have to use the environments and the skills that they have together to get those scarves. So that's the puzzle basically of it. So it'll be things like your ice guy will freeze water, so he'll be able to stand on ice, whereas the uh, fire woman will basically go through the ice because she melts the, the ice and turns it into water. So based on those different uh, areas, you'll be able to either get a higher advantage from, you know, ice boy, whereas the, the girl can go underneath things and get to a lower place. And then it starts introducing newer elements where you're able to create these like paths that you can run up based on the angles that your character's um, visions create so like as an example if one character is higher than the other like is on top of a hill that uh screen split will then go to the side so it'll be like um half of the screen not horizontally but more vertically and so based on that you can then use a move where it creates this like line this kind of like imaginary line that one character can run up to get to different areas so they keep doing that with each world there's like a little added new thing that they they put in some kind of element that just makes it harder more difficult to get to these scarves so to speak so basically to to back up on this is i don't care about the story really i just i enjoy the puzzle aspect to it um Generally, with these games, I do get kind of worn out easily. It, it reminds me a lot of, uh, I believe it was Trine. I had the same kind of like, I really liked it at first, and then it starts to kind of slow down because after you start getting further into the game, it's like it gets harder and harder, and then you're like, ah, I don't even want to collect these stupid scarves, and you just end up leaving. Um, but it was nice because it's it's a game where there's obviously two characters, so you can, um, I'm playing on the Switch, and you can just you know give... Uh, two separate people a Joy-Con and play. So I've been playing with my wife. I actually ended up playing it on um, Valentine's Day. It was the first day it came out, and I played it with her on that day just because it was one of those like, uh, oh, this is a, a cool little little game, and it's a, supposed to be about two people who like find each other, so to speak. So it was like a cliche Valentine's Day thing that we did at the end of the day when it was pretty much wrapping up. But we, we kept playing a couple of days, and it's it's been fun. I don't know if I'm going to continue um just because going through it like i said there's a lot of fatigue in like those type of games at least for me as a player but the time that i had with it was pretty fun nice i actually came across it when we were doing the indie games release schedule Mm -hmm. um which disclaimer we are not doing anymore or just aren't at the moment because I thought, because we both kind of thought it sounded boring, so no big deal. But when I was doing it, um, I had come across degrees of separation, and if I'm being honest, the art style really threw me off, so I wasn't super into it. Mm. But it sounds kind of interesting. I like that you said that uh, each of their abilities and worlds can interact with the other. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, like it, it sets up for different like ways to solve puzzles. Yeah, I really liked how they they did it um, just because of, like I said, the the environment was my favorite thing of like watching the difference in the screens when one character would be on one side versus the other of like, so there's basically like lanterns in the game where if the uh, ice guy is by the lantern, they'll go out. Whereas with the fire girl, I need to think of a better name for these people. I need to actually remember their names. Uh, but when she's on Just that, refer to them as Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Shark Boy, well, when Lava Girl is uh, on, <laughs> on, on that side and the lantern is there, it'll be uh, lit and it'll basically raise up and start floating to the top. So there's a lot of things like that where the environment is very dependent on who you have on that side of the screen. And so you have to play around moving them in the right order to basically get what you need so it it, there's there's a lot of good parts to it that i think was designed uh 
pretty smart. Uh, it's just those type of games I cannot play for too long. Otherwise, I just get way too exhausted. All right. Uh, have you been playing anything else, or you just want to save that until later? Uh, well, I actually did play one other thing that I tried out. Um, I tried um, Florence. Really? So, yeah. So um, one of the cool things about having an Android phone is you can sign up for this thing called, uh, I think it's Google Surveys? I don't remember exactly the the name of it, but... Um, it's the thing where you do surveys and it gives you, like, in cash or whatever? Yeah. Um, the, like, Google cash? Yeah, it's called Google Opinion Rewards. So it's basically yeah. every, like, every week or so, sometimes more, sometimes less frequent, they basically just say, like, hey, uh, have you been to this place? And you're like, yeah, I was there, like, the other day. And they're like, oh, did you buy anything? And you're like, yeah, I did. And then they're like, cool. And then they give you 20 cents. And it's a really wow! What an amazing reward! I know, and it's really strange. And I, <laughs> I was like, I, I never like putting my credit card in, especially with like Android stuff, like for you know, for like your cell phone or putting cards in to just enter any services, just because I'm weird about that and very skeptical. So I was like, oh, I'll do this Google Opinion Rewards and do it for. I think it took me about a month, uh, but a month went by, and I finally got enough where I had racked up. Two ninety nine, which was how much Florence cost, so I ended up just getting uh, getting the game and trying it out. Um, so the actual game, uh, if you don't know, is basically a love story, so to speak. Have you ever played Florence? No, I've heard a lot about it. I also am very skittish of putting my card into like basically anything, yeah. let alone yeah the the Google Play Store. Not yeah. a fan. Yeah, so it was really nice to go through the Google Opinion Rewards model of just getting that money for basically nothing and not having to put my card in. Um, but anyway, back to the actual game itself. So Florence, it was a, it's a Android or iOS game where you basically play as Florence, who it goes through a whole story of a woman who basically goes through what it seems like her first relationship um, and also her first heartbreak. Um, and it's a story of her going through basically these little, they're, they're very short chapters throughout the entire game. It's only about, um, what seems like an hour to two hours of gameplay, which was a little, you know, for the $3 is kind of a little pricey, but if you do it the way that I did, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, but the story of it is, is the main part. It was really nice because the way the actual gameplay works is it's not anything crazy, but the, the little activities that they make you do all feel very tailored to the activity in that portion of the game. So what I mean by that is there's a part where the, uh, character Florence meets the, uh, uh, character who is her basically going to be her boyfriend and uh, they're on their first date, and the way it works is you're meeting someone new, so it's like, you know that awkward feeling you get when you talk to someone who you really don't really know and you're trying to like learn about them? So the way they did it is you would have to create their conversation like it was a puzzle. So it would give you a speech bubble, and it would give you puzzle piece, like that speech bubble broken out as a puzzle, and you would have to put it all together. And that would be then her saying something. And then it would go him saying something, and then it would go to you again. And you would have to do that one more time. And it kept repeating. And as you were going on this date, it would start off where you had a lot of puzzle pieces and had to put them all together. And then it started to get easier and easier and easier. And it's basically showing the the concept of like, oh, they're getting to know each other. They're really, you know, things are really clicking it's getting easier to talk to the person because she likes him because, you know, so it was like, there's a lot of little elements to it that were very unique that you don't see in other areas that were, Oh, this is really like a really cool concept. And also the story to it at the end, you know, the full story of her going through this breakup and becoming a better person afterwards is very, um, very relatable. So I think, I think it's definitely worth the amount. Uh, I would recommend it. Yeah. I've been trying to, (sighs) I don't know. Eventually, I'm just going to have to like buy it or I'll buy a Google Play card, but they're always like $20. I don't want to put $20 into it because then I'd have to spend a full $20 on the App Store. And let's be real. I don't give a fuck about those other games, dude. I just want to play Florence. That's it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Gotta... I've been on the edge for like a year. 
just get so just get been the, a while get the opinion rewards app and do that for about a month and then you'll be fine. i have it i just really hated that it kept sending me notifications i was like fuck off I'm do this. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to help you <laughs> yeah right uh, just all sorts of issues uh this week i have been like so many other bioware fans uh playing uh Fuck, I totally forgot what his name is. Anthem. I've been Ooh. playing Anthem. Jeez. <laughs> I can't believe I just skipped on its name. Real good um, things, I've huh? Been, yeah. I mean, I actually enjoy it. Um, I'm planning on writing, like, a story about it. it I don't want to give too much away because, I mean, it's early. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I'm really enjoying Anthem The uh, just in general. It's it's a lot of fun. I do have my gripes with it. Uh, Fort Tarsus is super boring. Um, it's like very wide open space for how much is like there's not much to do in Fort Tarsus. But man, is it wide open. And every playing, time I say. Are you playing what? with people? No, I play by myself. Mm, that's weird. Yeah, I, I don't want to play with anybody. I specifically mm. want to play by myself. Um, which I've heard detracts from a decent amount of it, but also, um, I feel like that's probably just in combat because Fort Tarsus is kind of your own thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah, like I said, I have some gripes, but it's, it's overall, it's, it's a good game. It's, I enjoy it and I'm excited to see where it goes, but I'm, I'm definitely like, I set my expectations accordingly and anybody wanting to pick it up, I would do the same. Yeah, it's it's definitely not going to be Mass Effect with friends in the, like amazing Iron Man suits. It's just going to be like you and your friends in Iron Man suits. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, um, it still doesn't sound that, that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cool. Um, the customization is not. Everybody's like, oh, there's so much customization. And I'm like, oh, yeah? Can you customize anything other than the color of your javelin, basically? And they're like, well, well n- no. Like, there's five. There's a couple different, like, pieces of uh, armor that you can switch out, especially if you just want to buy stuff. Um, but they don't make it very easy. There's one store. There's two stores in Fort Tarsus, but it's just one store. It's literally the same store. You just tab over, and it's a different section of the same store. So no matter where, what store you go to, you could just go to the other side. It doesn't matter. You literally just click L1 or R1. It's <laughs> it's very easy to do. Um, but other than playing Anthem, I have been playing more Hollow Knight, of course, just naturally, because I'm walking PR for Hollow Knight. Um, and I have been, uh, popping into another game, but I will save that until later because we are going to be doing something fun in our little secret segment of this week. Um, but first I actually want to get into the indie games news that we're going to talk about today. Um, our first story is over on IGN and this is actually kind of like a three for, cause we, I, I grabbed three different versions of this story just cause each one had something interesting to say, but I don't think I'm really going to pick that much from, I don't think I'm going to pick that much from each of them just because they pretty much all say the same things with just one additional tidbit. So, mm-hmm. um, but the, the first of the three articles is over on IGN this written by, um, Michael Domenico, maybe Michelle Domenico. It's, it's a person. That's the thing. <laughs> um, this is a horror game devotion. It disappears from steam following meme controversy. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's memes, so it's the memes controversy. No big deal. Um, uh, a Taiwanese horror game has been removed from Steam following a controversy surrounding the Winnie the Pooh and uh, the Chinese president. I don't know how to say his name and don't want to be a dickhead about it, so I'm just going to leave that out. Um, <laughs> Devotion was removed from Steam after users found an in-game meme mocking... Uh, I'm going to say Xi because I think that's I think the way you say it. Well, there you go. Xi Jinping is the way you say it. Um, according to The Verge, every single article I see, uh, the three articles I have on this, all like reference The Verge. They all just found the one Verge article. And they're like, <laughs> all right, cool. Um, an in-game poster reportedly says, uh, Xi Jinping, Winnie the Pooh moron. They really hit that one on the nose. They just went for it. They definitely didn't try to do any sort of subtext. They just, yep. All right. Um, an apparent reference. I like how to say an apparent reference. If it says that, it's not an apparent reference. It's literally saying that he's a moron and really hinting toward his resemblance to Winnie the Pooh. Okay? Yeah. Like, it's not apparent. Um, 
the apparent reference to the internet meme that uh, that have compared the Chinese president to the famous cartoon bear. It remains unclear if this is the exact reason the game was removed. Um, now I want to hop over to another article that I have over on Polygon. Uh, this is basically just saying that the... I really needed to pull it up a lot faster. It's okay. <laughs> My internet's terrible. Um, this is by Owen S. Good, and it is Taiwanese game mocks Chinese uh, president and Chinese gamers review bomb it. Uh, so it seems that a lot of people took offense to this and ended up review bombing the shit out of devotion over it, um, which is kind of interesting considering there was like news like last week that Reddit was allowed in China or something like that. And a bunch of people were just pretty much spamming the Winnie the Pooh meme because mm-hmm. they really wanted to get that through. Um, but it does look like uh, the, the devs did not get like, they, they didn't necessarily, they weren't banned from steam supposedly, or at least this is what IGN um, has to say about it. This is Shabana Arif. They say that uh, it was taken down or they took it down because they wanted to fix a few issues. Uh, they had technical issues and une- that caused unexpected crashes. And they did want to check for some you, uh, they wanted to do a complete QA check to ensure that no other um, unintended materials were left in the game. I like they just say unintended. I know, gotta like QA. somebody didn't mean to put that there. <laughs> gotta QA those Winnie the Poohs out. <laughs> yeah, it's you obviously meant for that fucking thing to be in there. Like it's probably that okay. one that one guy who like did it as a joke, and the team's like, "Ha ha, that's good." And then they were just like, "Oh crap." Yeah, they forgot you, about it. They accidentally definitely, released it. <laughs> God, God damn it, Bob! You were definitely in charge of taking the Winnie the Pooh thing out. I would imagine, yeah, that's probably exactly what happened. Um, so I'm assuming this is eventually going to come back to Steam if it has not already with the the Winnie the Pooh thing taken out. I guess so. Do you think they'll still have the dumb moron part, though? Maybe he won't be offended by that one. Yeah, maybe it'll just be like a picture of Winnie the Pooh and it'll just say dumb moron. <laughs> like, it's, it's not even going to be, like, it won't be a reference toward him. It's just them really hating on Winnie the Pooh, but then, of course, you'd have all the Disney fans coming after you for oh, the, yeah, calling true. Winnie the Pooh a dumb moron, even though, how the hell I mean, is he getting his head stuck in this pot all the time? I mean, that kind of kind of is his character. Like, Yeah, kinda he is, is a dumb moron. Also, okay? is that really necessary to say dumb moron? No. Huh. <laughs> like, they, it's, yeah, it, it's unnecessary. You could just say moron or dumb. <laughs> the, the same thing. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I think I mean I don't I don't want to offend anyone and I don't know anything about this whole situation, but I just think it's hilarious that that's like the tipping point. Like I guess first off, they really shouldn't be doing anything political in their game when it's just like this horror game that has nothing to do with it, but like geez. I mean that doesn't necessarily stop anybody else from doing it. Like no, putting no. any sort of politics in the game, even though it's not necessarily what their game is about. I know. <laughs> well, but that's there's a difference between being like, I don't see eye to eye with this Mr. Xi Jinping versus he's a Winnie the Pooh moron. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good point. There's different ways to get around, <laughs> get around Besides it. just dick punching this guy, they're just like, ha, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. But I mean, in general, I think it's pretty funny. Like just the Winnie the Pooh culture that is like sprung because of this of how like they were saying the, the fact that everything has been banned, been banned. that refers to winnie the pooh yeah <laughs> i think it's hilarious like what a weird thing to, to have to do for your country <laughs> like like imagine imagine if we had to get rid of all like i don't know orange trolls like come on now I don't know at all who you're referring to. I don't know either. Yeah. But we'll just no uh, idea. We'll move on to the next story. <laughs> So our next story is over on Game Informer. Uh, this written by Hunter Wolf, and it is The Occupation's new gameplay trailer puts players, mother of God, the Skype icon is in my way, um, puts players <laughs> on a deadline. <laughs> I like went to I even scrolled down so that I could see it and then of course Game Informer has a super annoying header that just d- dissolves everything like this is fucking infinity war and I just can't see shit. Okay, mm. it's really pissing me off. Um, the the Occupation is an upcoming first-person thriller that puts players in the role of an investigative journalist in 1987 um, who has only four hours to crack the case of a terrorist bombing. 
the latest gameplay trailer walks players through a portion of the game illustrating the branching paths players can take uh, to gather leads for their expose. So um, if you didn't watch the trailer on this, which I think we were talking about before. I did not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, you didn't think we were going to talk about this one. But if- I thought it was a news crap story. I was just like, ah, gameplay trailer. He's not going to want to talk about it. And then you just happen to choose the one thing. The one thing. um yeah no i just wanted to talk about it for a little bit because it does look really interesting i love games that do this concept of having it like in game time is real time um and basically the whole point is you're you're looking for clues and trying to solve this mystery of this like bomb threat that's happening and so you have i think it's four hours they say so it's four real hours to basically figure this out and go through and so it seems like this is one of those things where um they they mention it's it's very like dishonored how players have different ways of going about tasks so you can find information by i'm assuming either you know sneaking past someone or actually taking some i i, I assume you're not taking someone out since you're a detective but i don't <laughs> i don't think it's going to be like dishonored with that uh route but there's different things in there that you know it's it's more of like build your own like how would you solve this mystery so to speak um and it it just it looks very interesting but this is one of the things i was talking to you before we started recording is these kind of games are so cool but every time i see them like this type i feel like i'll never play it just because one the fact that it's four hours is awesome for being you know real game time in like actual time but it also is like god am i really gonna go through four hours just to not figure out the mystery and be like fuck i have to go through another four hours and try to figure this out like it's it's a you have long... to play through it all over again i jesus well i assume you would like what are you gonna do like well i mean i'd assume you would but you could also just like you know what to do kind yeah. of a thing well like, yeah if, that's the when thing. you go back through you're just like all right cool i'll do this real quick yeah that's the thing i think yeah if there's save states i think it would be much more manageable but like the way i'm thinking about this is it's going to be like you did your four hours uh uh-oh bomb explodes you didn't make it and then it's like all right i'm gonna try it again and it's like that's kind of cool because you're like learning from it but since it's not more of like a a bite-sized piece of it like god damn that's a long time to be like well everything i did for this was a waste yeah i guess that really makes sense i was gonna compare the gameplay to like minute how you only had a minute and then you died and you had to go back through yeah but yeah, yeah. yeah the, i guess a minute is far different than exactly four hours. yeah like that was like minute did it really well because yeah you go back and you're like all right now i know what to like even if you didn't accomplish it you're like i know what to do now it's only a minute that i wasted but it was a minute learning and now the next minute will be me solving it. Whereas this is like four hours where you could go a whole four hours and be like, and even it, maybe if you're not even like good, like you're not on the right track, you could spend a whole four hours doing something and be like, I have no idea what I did wrong. And then have to start it all over and be like, all right, well, let's try a bunch of other random things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it looks really cool. I don't know if I'll jump on it uh right away for sure but this is something that depending on how it's actually like how it's received it it definitely does seem like something i could get behind but if it doesn't have those safe states i probably wouldn't just because of the the time loss that you get from that four hours of real time yeah i would hate to spend four hours in it basically learn nothing and then have to redo it again yeah okay that's just obnoxious um if you guys would like to find out how the occupation turns out uh you can check it out on march 5th uh is when it's going to come out on xbox one ps4 and pc or at least that is according to hunter wolf over on game informer um our next story is still on game informer this one is written by imram khan and it is a rumor so of course take this with a grain of salt there's a lot of people reporting on this I mainly just wanted to talk about it because of its implications for the uh, the indie games related. But um, it is Microsoft bringing Game Pass and publishing titles uh, to Switch. So there's a lot about this, and I'm assuming if you guys um, 
are listening to this podcast, you more than likely listen to a lot of other video games podcasts. So I'm just going to go over it real quick. There is a rumor going around um, based on a report done by Direct V Games, who is an outlet that has a supposedly a strong track record um, on rumors referring to Nintendo that says that it's possible that Microsoft is going to be bringing uh, either certain titles or just the entire Game Pass library uh, to the Nintendo Switch. Um, I would assume... A portion of this rumor has something to do with the fact that uh, there was the whole like Xbox Live app coming to Nintendo Switch as well. Um, but the the big thing I want to talk about uh, with this is the possibility of um, so the apparently their reports but spe- uh, specifically mentioned um, bringing uh, by direct feed bringing or in the blind forest over to the Nintendo Switch, which makes me wonder um, if they do this, does that mean that it's a possibility? that Ori and the Will of the Wisps its sequel will be released on the Nintendo Switch and uh, as Imram Khan says as well he wants to know like if uh, Cuphead might also come to the Ooh, Switch but so. my real thing is I want to know if Ashen is going to come to Switch because I really want to play Ashen but I don't want to turn on my Xbox One it's a hard life okay don't judge me Josh uh, I'm- <laughs> I'm judging just a little, just, just a little. You naturally should. Yeah. I mean, I don't have game pass or anything, so I can't just, I I would have to buy the game and then play it on there, but still, (laughs) I would much rather play it on my Nintendo switch. Okay. Okay. All right. I can, I can, I can get behind that. Uh, man, what a world, what is happening right now in games where like the console wars is basically being like the console friendly. Like, I don't, I don't know. The console. It's basically let's go up, uh, let's gear up against Sony. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. Got to take the the king down, you know. <laughs> um, but it's it's really interesting to see what that could be. I hope it's not just a rumor. I do hope that this, this gets announced because, like, I was an Xbox fan in the fa- in the past, and I like what they're doing. Granted, it's not really for Xbox if I'm buying everything on Switch, but through their service. But I mean, I would still be be paying them for that, you know, their their streaming service. And I would like it because it would start getting Switch to to do more streaming games, which is really the you know the main limitation of the console, just the fact that it it can't do those high powered games without doing a streaming part. But I'm hoping that that would push it to d- start doing things in america versus just the streaming games in japan because like yeah the infrastructure is not as good but i'd still like to see it and if you get you know the actual um connection for it like i'm sure if you have a good enough internet you'll be fine like i can stream other stuff i'm sure i could stream a game especially if it's you know not like an online game where you're going to be playing up against others but like for for certain other games where if it's like um like the Resident Evil game that was done in the past. like Resident Evil 7? Yeah, like that's not something you're going to need online. That's not something you're going to need, you know, just with the utmost of, uh, I don't know why I'm blanking on the word. Um, I understand the, but, the, the, the limitations of your system's processing power won't necessarily matter because it's just streaming it. Yeah. It's, it's not like it running everything adi- as... Uh, like over the internet while also running a multiplayer feature. Yeah, and like what I'm saying is basically from doing type of like single player games, it's a lot more manageable for these systems because any amount of, you know, the system not being able to uh, process that smoothly just because it is obviously a streaming system um, would kind of be forgiven more or less in those kind of situations. Whereas with the online play, that would be a lot harder to get away with just because you'd get killed by something that you don't see kind of, but like if that pushes them to start doing this more in America, that would be awesome because then we would get a whole slew of games that really would make the switch a, a really high competitor with, you know, someone like the PlayStation console, but where it's weird is like, what is Microsoft gaining from this? Like, I mean, you'd have to actually pay for Game Pass. Yeah, but is that really where their revenue is coming from? Game Pass? Like, 
Ultimate. Uh, they're giving up all their first, all the profits that they make for first party titles. Yeah. Just to Game Pass. So I would assume they're making a lot of money. I guess. But is that enough to warrant basically them? Because this, this kind of movement would sound like something if you were done with working on hardware. Yeah, they they talked about like X Cloud and everything, mm-hmm. and the possibility of like Project Scarlet, which is technically still hardware, but it's it's much less reliable. I mean, not not reliable. That's not the word I'm going for. Um, it's much less reliant on all of it because the the thought process behind the the Project Scarlet, which is rumored as well, is that it's a box that it's just a streaming box. Mm-hmm. So you uh, supposedly it wouldn't have a disk drive or anything like that. It would just be streaming games from the internet. Um something that I did think about um or I just randomly thought about is the only thing that would truly suck about um like Game Pass or Games Pass however it's actually supposed to be said I'm not 100% certain um the only thing that would really suck about a like streaming future um coming to or these games streaming on the Nintendo Switch is because the kind of games that I'm specifically talking about with like Cuphead and Ori in the Blind Forest um Cuphead is a very precise platformer and any sort of like um network connectivity issues or any sort of just lag in general you're gonna die all the fucking time (laughs) and it would be excessively annoying um and uh, there are a decent chunk of these games that like ori in the blind forest is also a 2d platformer like metroidvania Mm -hmm. um and the platforming at times can get kind of challenging depending on what you're doing so that would be the only thing i'm truly worried about with this but yeah i uh I also share your sentiment that you got to wonder, like, what Microsoft is really getting from this. Also, like, what Nintendo's necessarily getting from this, Mm -hmm. um, because they would be allowing them to bring this service to their console, but you would have to assume that, like, they would have to be getting some sort of cut, some sort of monetary gain from it. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, the... Yeah, I don't really know because Game Pass, you you don't pay for specific titles. You you pay for the service and then you can download the titles or in this case stream. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I don't I don't really know. I mean, I maybe don't... like Microsoft would give a certain portion in, to Nintendo based on the amount, like the metrics of people playing on their system. But I don't know. Maybe and even if they didn't, I don't think it would be a negative to the Switch, so to speak, because. Anything that's going to sell those consoles because they now have that new extra piece is still a win for Nintendo, even if they're not getting the revenue of those games. Because, like, if you think about Nintendo, you're always going to still shell out for those first-party titles. And that's really where Nintendo shines. And if this is another reason for you to get nintendo like their console because hey we also have these other games that generally you don't have is more of a benefit even if xbox wasn't giving them a cut yeah that makes sense i mean the same could be said about microsoft is that the the people buying nintendo switches may not ever like actually buy an xbox one so they would Mm -hmm. be missing out on this big revenue stream that they could uh if they just put game game pass games pass um on the nintendo switch this is money that they never would have even seen so Mm -hmm. it's like what would they get they would get profits that literally they would never have seen um because maybe these people never would have bought a microsoft product i guess um if they don't have an xbox one then they're not going to buy the games they're not going to buy the the like online services they're not going to do any of that um you could also do it like on pc actually i don't know about game game pass and pc because they have the the play anywhere but i don't know how that interacts with pc yeah no there's a there's a way to get game pass for pc oh there you go then yeah okay (laughs) but yeah the this being on additional consoles um is kind of just i would say a win for microsoft because if people weren't going to buy it anyway Mm -hmm. this is just like cool now they're going to buy it because they can play these games that they couldn't play before yeah i mean i just want this so i can have achievements on the switch again or not again but (laughs) have achievements again. so you could just have any sort of achievement yeah. system it's, on the nintendo switch it's really <laughs> one of the things that i i gripe on a lot just because 
everyone is doing it. Why can't Nintendo already? I want those. Which is weird because of how much you hated Steams, huh? What's I, up, Big Josh Boy? Big Josh Boy. I mean, I don't... <laughs> like, here's the difference. Okay, with Steam, there's just so many games, and there's a lot of games that I just don't care about. With achievements, you usually want to get those achievements of the games where you're like, I really enjoy this. I want to put a lot of time into it. And I'm a really big Nintendo fan, and I always have been. So a lot of the games that come out for Nintendo, I really like, and I always want that extra motivation of like i want to sink more time into this because of x y and z and it's going to sound stupid but if those things aren't there there's a good chance that i might not do it because i'm like eh, there's nothing really pulling me like a, a good example is breath of the wild breath of the wild is an amazing game it had a lot of good things but to be honest once i beat ganon i was like i'm done with the game there's a ton more that i could be doing but there's really nothing in the game that if i'm not specifically like hey, hey, come come do this, that I was like, all right, well, I'm done with it. And Shit, I didn't even beat Ganon. I got shocked by lightning one too many times. I was done. Just take off your... That was so fucking annoying. Yeah, I took it all off, and I put it on the ground for five seconds, and I came back, and it was all gone. Oh, it pissed well, me off. You didn't have to actually get it out of your inventory. You just have to take it off. It's still annoying, Josh. It's still annoying. <laughs> I will say, though, when that first happened, I was so upset because I was like, what is going on? I could not. It's a really interesting feature, but acting like I'm a fucking like gigantic lightning rod because I'm holding a metal sword is bullshit. They made all this big deal about horses not running into trees because horses aren't dumb. Well, lightning doesn't strike me if I have my keys on me, okay? Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. Yep. And that's why Microsoft Game Pass is a great thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for our next uh, our next news story, we are over on Polygon, and uh, this is written by Patricia Hernandez. Um, it is even Stardew Valley has a competitive esports scene. Yeah, I bet you never would have thought that would happen, guys. It's pretty weird. Um, I'm just totally going to skip 90% of this article because it is not news. Like the, the first part where it talks about like, it's a pretty good introduction, but yeah, that's not news. Um, it seems like Twitch is hosting an esports event where players are competing against one another in Stardew Valley. The goal is to collect the most gold or bundles, uh, before the end of the game accomplishing that requires the typical Stardew Valley gameplay. We all know and love not me fucking stupid pickaxes <laughs> done. <laughs> Um, that includes farming, fishing, foraging, spelunking, and so on. Um, but there is also a multiplayer, uh, multiplayer, what? Multiple commenters who hype the action as it yeah. unfolds. Why? Why? Yeah. So this is what are they hyping? So this is what I thought was so funny. So I read this article and I was like, okay, well, I gotta go check this out. So, and for those who do check this article out, you have to actually go to the Twitch page and then find the video because they simply linked the twitch rivals uh site like their channel so right now they're doing as of this very yeah, moment it's live the, yeah it's live moment. right now so they're playing like blackout they're playing blackout <laughs> so it's it doesn't make any sense um so they needed to link the actual video but i guess if they had done this beforehand that's why they wouldn't have the video link uh regardless they could change it now but it doesn't matter anyway so you have to find the actual stardew valley video for it but it was really funny to me just because uh it, it it's exactly what it sounds like it's it's basically just a guy who's or guy or girl depending on who the player is but person just playing stardew valley and it's that's just what it is it's just like him chopping at trees and digging through some dirt and it's just the comments the commentators are going like really crazy they're like oh i can't believe they're doing it that way oh they're losing I a lot of time i was ask here. you about losing, that yeah Did they go ham they were yeah they were like making fun of this person because they were like oh i don't know why he's doing that this doesn't make any sense this person clearly has not played this game much <laughs> like it was really weird i was like whoa like they were very serious about like this whole world i guess i don't know i don't know I don't know. I was I I watched it for uh, a couple of minutes and I was just like I like the commentators, but I was just like I'm not going to actually just watch Stardew Valley. It would be so funny if somebody was just randomly streaming Stardew Valley. They weren't even part of this and this like internet like uh, commenter these these commentators are like mocking them. They're like he doesn't even what is he is he not even like trying right now and then they're like, "Oh, 
He's he, not. He's not. He's not part of it. Oh. <laughs> he's not part. Oh, jeez, we probably okay. shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, they're like mocking this person that's not even part of their stupid competition. It's like, oh, he's just trying to have fun with this game instead of, you know, trying to rush through it. Oh man. Oh no. Uh, you, that's, you, like the main I definitely point don't of look the like game. An asshole right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I do think that the Twitch rivals uh, scene is pretty cool of like having all these these esports like competitions going through, but like. Do we really need a Stardew Valley one? Apparently, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> it's it's an untapped market. <laughs> I, mean, I suppose so. I yeah, I need to check what the actual I wish I could have seen what the viewer rate was at the time of that. Uh definitely not I'm assuming not twelve thousand. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't Black think twelve thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> Black House like over twelve thousand. I'm assuming not uh, twelve thousand people were not watching these guys competitively play Stardew Valley. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, looking at the views, so the views from the video, um which I believe with Twitch it shows the the amount of views after though. I I don't remember how the count works for that. But it does have nine point four K damn yeah that's what i'm saying that would be ridiculous if nine thousand people watched <laughs> watched several people play stardew valley yeah that's uh that's literally just like looking out a window nine thousand wow. people just Dude, staring out a window 9.4k for stardew but only 2.3 for celeste what Jeez, this is dumb <laughs> i'm done <laughs> A game that can actually be competitive versus Stardew Valley. I guess the intrigue of it might kind of like lend yeah, to it because yeah, you yeah. understand how Celeste is competitive. Like, oh, it's it's about speed running. It's about uh, getting the the strawberries and everything. And then uh, Stardew Valley, you're like, how the hell are you making this competitive? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's basically why I found this article so interesting. I was like, what? This is a thing. Wow. Yeah, that's uh that's interesting, all right. You know what's even more interesting, Josh? What? News cram. Oh yeah. Cram, 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 cram. Boom. Uh if you guys didn't know, news cram is where we put all of the news stories that we don't think we're uh going to talk about. That's it's exciting. But then right. we do. Uh, just yeah, slightly. we generally end up talking about it anyway. Um, so I'm going to let you guys know what platform these articles are on so you guys can go check them out. There's a lot of cool articles, a lot of great indie games news, um, and also some of them are just that basically all the news is in the title. It's really not that hard. Um, so our first news cram story is Dead Cells gets free DLC this year playable at PAX East. This over on IGN. Um, then Cells. we have an additional little bit. Um, it is uh, Over on Twinfinite, you got a sneak peek at Dead Cells upcoming free DLC um, and Astrolab Biome in motion twin video. The video is actually kind of interesting. The only reason I wanted to say anything about that is <laughs> they do this like weird like Avengers like roundabout thing in the beginning, um, and I don't know necessarily if like the video producers, just random people, or <coughs> or the team themselves are doing it, but they like they start off in this really like high octane environment and there's people like riding like mopeds and skateboards and yeah, rollerblades they kept, everywhere. They kept I was like cutting to the, the like the, the skate park. And I was like, why yeah. is this here? <laughs> yeah. It's like, just talk about the game. What is happening? <laughs> um, yeah. our next one is, uh, under high, Ugh. Untitled Goose Game. I told you, dude, gotta outweigh it. Gotta expand my vocabulary. Yeah, that's just true. That's true. Outweigh all this stuff. Um, Untitled Goose Game has been delayed. This over on Game Informer. Wah, wah. Um, futuristic indie black. Uh, futuristic indie black futures console port is coming to Switch first. This is over on Game Informer. Oh, cool. uh, Thumbleweed Park. Thimble, not Thumble. Thumbleweed. It is Thimble. <laughs> that's a, Thimbleweed that's an Park. An old West game. <laughs> <laughs> Thimbleweed Park now free on Epic Game Store. Slime Rancher coming soon over on Twinfinite. Uh, free write the rule or f- dude. Oh, you're going crazy right now. <laughs> Rewrite the rules. <laughs> Rewrite the news with the official release of Baba Is You. Uh, Toho Luna Nights gets a new gameplay trailer Looks and dope. teases end of early access. It really does. Yeah. Um, Stardew Valley celebrates anniversary with release 
release date on Android. Oh, and uh, To the Moon coming to Switch this summer. And it's also being remade in Unity. Mm-hmm. Um now it's time to move on to one of my favorite segments of the podcast. This is where Josh goes in to all sorts of different crowdfunding sites, finds some awesome uh, Kickstarter, just indie games on whatever, Indiegogo. I don't know where he goes. He has a talent. Okay, guys? Um, he goes in there, he grabs them, and we talk about them. Uh, this week, we've got Crossroads Inn in Death Bulge Battle of the Bands. Um, so, the first one, I mean, we'll just go down, like, one after the other. So, Crossroads Inn is really interesting. Mm-hmm. And before I forget to say it, I do want to just get this out of the way. Um, two things. And I promise I will, I'll try not to mock the game any more than this. They have a story trailer where in the trailer they say like uh, that there's a prince. They're like, oh yeah, this this prince. And then literally like the cue card for this guy says Duke. And I'm like, nope. That's, you literally just said prince. It's a Duke. They're two different things. Just thought I'd let you know. Um, and then uh, also in the, uh, yeah, um, in the description of the game, it's kind of interesting. It says, uh, in Crossroads Inn, you play as an owner of a tavern located in the heart of a fantasy land um, of Delcrease. I'm assuming is how you're supposed to say it. Um, your tavern is situated directly next to borders of the three powerful kingdoms on the crossroads of the biggest trade route. Um, you face quite a challenge. How to survive in these difficult economic conditions and transform uh, this rundown dive into a prosperous business. I would just like to point out that if you are seemingly the only tavern that exists on the crossroad of the greatest trade route between three different kingdoms, I don't understand how it's a challenge for you to make your dive bar into a prosperous business. That is literally the fucking gold mine. That is what people look for in a business. If you were in a, like a podunk town in the middle of nowhere... That's a challenge. But mm. being on the greatest trade route between three kingdoms is not. Uh, well, I would like to point out... easy mode, and then hard mode is where there's three other taverns <laughs> right next to you. Yeah, that's very possible. Um, I understand... I mean, the real challenge of this and the, the coolest part of this game is uh, if you watch the story trailer, it's it talks about how, like, your inn is going to affect the the wars that are waged basically between these three kingdoms mm-hmm. and how since it's like in the crossroad between these three kingdoms, I'm assuming you can affect uh, the world in certain ways. Like you basically are providing uh, a place for kind of like, I, I don't know, you're providing a place where all these different kingdoms can come and just relax and see the other side of everything. Um so it's not just necessarily like these are villains. They're no longer your enemies. They're just kind of drinking buddies. So I think that's really cool. Um, it's a really interesting concept for a game. I know we've got a lot of different like Sims. I, there's farming simulator, hunting simulator, goat simulator, all that sort of stuff. Hey, don't knock um, goat simulator. <laughs> I'm assuming uh, like... I'm assuming there are tavern simulators, but I think the inclusion of it being in a fantasy land is really cool um, because it's it's not about you being like necessarily the hero in this crazy fantasy story. It's just like, yeah, dude, you got a bar. Just do with that what you will. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, the Crossroads Inn is uh, shooting for $30,000, and they currently still have 14 days left to go uh, uh, as of recording. Um, once this comes out, they should only have 11 or 12 days left to go. And uh, of their goal, they have $18,424. Uh, the, at the end of the video, which is something I really enjoy the Kickstarter does, where it tells you how close to, to their goal they are. Mm-hmm. It says that the Crossroad Inn is 61% toward their goal. Mm. I I hope oh. this hits just because it's an interesting game, mm-hmm. um, but I'm never going to play it. This is <laughs> never going to happen. Another one of those. So we got two, <laughs> yeah. we got two of those. It's really this. interesting. I'm just never going to play it. It's a cool concept. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much right there with you just because I'm not really much for, for Sims games, uh, to be honest. They're usually not really my thing but um but i do like you said to kind of piggyback off that i do really enjoy 
the fact that they're putting that um, emphasis on the world around you and kind of changing up what might happen. Um, in there, they have a bunch of different classes of people that will walk into the bar, or people that are part of the bar. So like adventurers, bards, um, videttas, which basically look like mistresses, um, kitchen staff, <laughs> caretakers, laborers, scoundrels, and watchmen. So there's a, a good variety of individuals who will walk through the bar, and I'm sure you have to deal with each one of them in a different way. So it's it looks like there's definitely going to be a lot of you know uh, unique parts to this that will make it kind of stand out from the rest of just being a simulator game. Um, but that being said, just because those aren't really my deal, I probably won't be into it, but anyone who is, this looks like something that has potential. Yeah. I imagine if you're a big fan of just like the Sims game, uh, Sims games, you, I, you're not creating your own character or anything like that, but in a way you're creating something much more intense. You're like creating a bar that Mm -hmm. takes place between three warring kingdoms. It's, it's really interesting. I like it a lot. It's it seems really cool, um, but yeah. Once again, uh, no, I'm not gonna play it. Just Are you gonna complain. complain about any of the tiers this time? So, I didn't really look at the tiers because I'm trying really hard. I I feel bad that I get really <laughs> negative about some of the Kickstarter pages sometimes. So I'm gonna you, try hard you not monster. to mock them. Yeah, something I will say did not include the one dollar tier. Yeah, that's true. They have a five. I'm very glad tier they instead. did that. Yeah, they've got the $5 Silent Admirer. Uh, thank you note in the credits. You get a wallpaper. D- d- okay, this is the one, or I guess technically this is the third bad thing I'm going to say about this Kickstarter. Stop with the fucking monthly updates thing as like a part. I can literally just get monthly update. I can just visit your Kickstarter page. I can click on updates. Look at that. I just did it. Cool. <laughs> Renaissance. Uh, it- kit bashing what the fuck is kit bashing? well i think one thing to talk <laughs> about for that is um I, I believe in kickstarter there's a way to uh turn that on and off as far as like visible to the public because yeah, a I, lot of people will offer exclusive like information i just think it's weird that they always include that yeah but no what i'm saying is though like once this kickstarter if it does reach what they'll do is they'll mark that as private so that for us, if we haven't backed it, we'll click on that updates button and it'll say like log in to see updates. Oh, you got me there. Yeah. Didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mm. So it's a little different. And all, honestly, it seems kind of like against themselves because you think you would want to market your you know, products yeah, you, while you're in you'd development. You'd want more press. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a little strange, but I guess if that's the tier, that's the tier, you know? Um, but yeah, that's very true. There's some uh, there's some cool stuff in it. There's a lot of like digital uh, art books, um, beta access for more monthly updates. Um, uh, there's some unique in-game items they're talking about as you get farther in the tier, but I don't see what exactly those game items are. Um, well, you can get a private AMA. That's pretty cool. That's Hopefully cool. not uh, on 8chan, you know what I mean? You get a beer opener. Wow. That's for a hundred uh-huh. bucks. In case you want <laughs> for a hundred bucks, you get a bottle opener. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, for nine hundred ninety-five dollars, you can get a Gamescom slash PAX ticket. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. Mm. I don't know how much PAX tickets or Gamecom tickets cost, but yeah, that's pretty cool. A dinner with the team during PAX slash Gamescom. That's pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's not like that weird one we talked about where he was like, a night on the town with the teams. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's really trying to swoon you, you know? Yeah, they're really trying to get your money, dude. Yeah. I mean, you're paying $995. I think they already got you. I mean, yeah. If you- <laughs> they're they're already in, you know what I'm saying? Um, the other game we've got on here is Death Bulge Battle of the Bands. So I actually wrote about this in an article Ooh, um, but yeah, while I was like checking out the Kickstarter, I did not know that this was based on a comic. Yeah. I had absolutely no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a little weird because literally in the video, he talks about his comic and I didn't know that. Foolish. I was like, all right, whatever. Until I got to like the tier where he offers, like you get all of his like previous work basically, mm-hmm. which is really cool. And they have a really sweet t-shirt. I really like that t-shirt. <laughs> 
Um, but to actually describe the game, uh, Death Bulge Battle of the Bands is an RPG video game where you battle as a band um, and use music as your weapon. Uh, the story is kind of interesting. It's all based around this band that basically gets into a battle of the bands, but it's cursed. So now uh, mm. music actually does damage. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, there's all sorts of interesting classes that you can switch between for each of the characters. Uh, and a lot of just the, the like, charisma that the world has is really interesting Mm -hmm. i love the little bit uh that she like kicks through a door and then she's like oh yeah ian's like kicked it in door collection like you literally just fucking kicked in that door that's it (laughs) yeah you have to wonder if that's a bit or if her character legitimately believes that he has a collection I guess it's going off the fact that he's so strong, he's breaking the door, because the whole point of his character is it's like he's very buff and like uh, focused yeah. on working out. Like I love the like portion of it where they talk about the uh, how they named the band, and it talks about uh, the name Death Bulge is inspired, of course, by Ian's deathly face and bulging muscles. Yeah. There is no other interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Keese's Broken Door Collection. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at the thing. So I actually played the demo for this, um, and it was it was actually pretty fun. It I was interested on how the actual gameplay would work, because if you're just looking at the images, it looks kind of wonky. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you that. It looks like you need, like, a fucking Guitar Hero controller or something yeah, to no, control. Yeah, no, not at all. So the way it works is basically if you're looking at any of the images on there... Um, you basically have these four boxes and what happens is your little character will go from the left hand side all the way to the right hand side. And when it hits the right hand side of all four boxes, it'll stop and it'll basically let you perform a move. And so you can perform moves based on, uh, your, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's basically like your mana in the game. Um, and so you can do things to either your, uh, like your four boxes, you can make two of them, uh, go faster so that your little character will go across them quicker. So you'll get to attack more. Uh, you can slow down the enemy and their boxes. You can make it so their boxes will actually hurt them when the cursor goes across them. The same thing, the enemy can do the same thing to you. So basically it can be a damaging mechanic a you know a mechanic to get you to attack quicker or slower and basically it's just constantly going from the left side to the right side and then you get to attack anytime it gets to that point and it's the same thing for the enemies so theirs is just going the opposite direction and whenever they hit the left they'll then perform an attack on you and so what's interesting about that is basically you have multiple characters, but only one can do an action at a time. So what happens is when you're not playing with one, like one standing there performing music, the other is just kind of cheering them in the background. When they're not up there performing, they're uh, quickly regenerating their MP. And so you want to go and swap the characters out. So you basically have to think of, okay, the enemy is going to attack me in a a few seconds, I want to swap out my character who's more tanky and take the damage. I want to keep the character in that uh, has a faster time to actually attack because your little little marker will move faster with certain characters. So you might want to have them out for more just to get them to the attack and then switch real quick so that the other one can use the attack. So there's a lot of like mechanics that go into it where you have to switch out the characters back and forth based on what you're trying to accomplish in the fight (coughs) excuse me so it's it's actually really cool just because it's it's a very different take on you know like a turn-based rpg yeah that reminds me a lot um the way you described like the combat in it reminds me a lot of has been heroes um i don't know if you've ever played that it's like a it's 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 combat is kind of weird. It It's like a lane based combat where you switch out your like you switch out your different characters to do different uh, things. It's kind of weird. It's hard to explain. Um, but Death Bulge looks really good. Mm-hmm. I actually really enjoy this. I like all the different classes that you can go into and how they're just kind of riffs on like 
the uh the standard rpg classes where like the the tuner seems a lot like just your standard healer or support class whereas like the uh um the show off seems a lot like uh like the berserker class Mm -hmm. kind of a thing Mm -hmm. it's i really like that a lot i like how this is a mix between like your a cool rpg and just this weird ass like death bulge comic book I, i think that's awesome yeah, it definitely, it's definitely something that I'm very interested in, and I really hope that they do get back to, oh, I just saw a couple of dollars go up just now, so good thing. Oh, man. Uh, they're at 27000 right now. They're looking for 25000 and they have 21 days to go. So, 35000 Uh, Did I say, what did I say? You said 25000 oh, Yeah, they're looking man. for 35000 only, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it would have been backed. No, there, There's yeah. no way that this doesn't hit it, though. It's got 21 days left to go. Yeah. That's, it, that, that's impossible. I mean, <laughs> it, it's possible. I but. mean, nothing. yeah, nothing's impossible, but... <laughs> but that's I just, hope it doesn't. I, I hope it happens. It yeah. already has 912 backers as well, so it's got a, it's got a pretty good following. Um, but yeah... I, I would assume a lot... Of, like, his comics seem to be, like pretty well known yeah so i would i would assume people would migrate over let alone you get these really cool physical items josh oh yeah tell me about them you could get a a freaking t-shirt bro you can get all sorts of cool stuff you can get all three of his books in a collection Mm -hmm. that's really cool Mm -hmm. i actually really thought about doing that one (laughs) it's it's quite spendy i mean it's it's eighty (laughs) dollars It's not that bad. It's eighty dollars. You get all three of his book or uh, four of his books, and um, you get like a T-shirt plus some other stuff. Oh, so honestly, it's it definitely seems worth it for eighty dollars. Bon, um, gonna, but that is very limited. I'm gonna burst your bubble. Yeah, uh, they probably already. Uh, that that one's gone. You yeah, cannot do the eighty tier. You can oh, do the fifty okay. tier, which is a sick T-shirt and the soundtrack, or a hundred for the sick me. T-shirt. And a customer char- or a custom character portrait, but uh, I like how they put the sick T-shirt in there. Yeah, <laughs> they call it a sick T-shirt. Oh, it's a sick T-shirt, all right. Well, that's cool that all of the like higher tiers are taken out though. There's a fucking thousand dollar tier. Jeez, I guess well, I mean it, there was only one, but still, yeah, someone that's crazy. Someone paid for it. I guess yeah, they should have done more of those. They might have might have got to their goal quicker. I mean, it's as limited as you could possibly get. I that's kind of what they were going for. Apparently. Yeah, I mean. But no, it, it's really cool, and I actually did check out. I didn't. I wasn't aware of their comics before. I've seen like I, I've, I've seen it before, but didn't really know that it was part of like an ongoing thing. Um, but I started checking out some of his comics online, and it is actually pretty good. So just based on that, based on the humor from the comics and from playing the demo, it's one that I can definitely see uh, myself playing and enjoying. Yeah, I'll actually probably play this one as well. I would also recommend anybody come and check out this Kickstarter pretty much just for the video he put out on it. It is a very interesting and weird video. It's so weird. Dude, when I was watching it, I was like, I can't wait to see what your comments are on it. The part with like the fish, like as the developers was so The two developers, the fish and chicken. Yeah, that was really weird. I mean, it's pretty well edited. It's a pretty well put together video considering what it is. It's, It's weird though. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're going to like, like, that's what you can expect from this game. Like just from starting the game off, like the world you're in, like you can't really tell as much in the images, but when you play the game, all of the trees, like that forest, like the place that you're in, all of those trees, they're just buff bods. Like take a look at it (laughs) and they're all just these ripped bodies with these crazy abs and biceps like the the tree trunks are biceps and the oh actual, my god they are like yeah <laughs> like it's i didn't even notice that the and it's very hard to see but the flowers are also all individual the petals are biceps like it's hilarious <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I would like the the like enemies that you come across in this. They seem to be like freakish, like mongoloids. They're disgusting. Yeah, the, they look so weird. The weird <laughs> bicep snail, and the other the other one yeah. is like the other thing that you were fighting that I remember vividly was just this giant hairball with arms and like eyeballs. Like he would just did it have biceps though? That's the real question. Uh, no, it had scrawny arms, but it was like it would only walk by just like grabbing the ground and forcing himself towards you. <laughs> Ew. Ew. That's disgusting. Yeah. It's it's a strange world. 
<laughs> it is a strange world we live in. But, Josh, you know what's always nice about the strange worlds we live in, which I don't know where this, this is yeah, going. Yeah, I was like, where is this um, going? Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. I just wanted to get into our secret segment. So each week now, we're going to come up with a different segment uh, to come at you guys with. This week, we wanted to try to sell you guys on some indie games that we have been playing or we just really enjoy. Um, I specifically took something that I don't think enough people really talked about uh, when it came out back in 2016, um, but I want to go second because oh, okay. uh yeah <laughs> okay I so wasn't yeah that. uh tell me about your indie game that you got this week josh all right so my convince me game is going to be streets of rogue um i'm actually really excited to be here about this yeah <laughs> it's like an interesting have you ever played streets of rogue no huh oh. i was actually really stoked for your like uh yeah, I'm just going to ruin it because it'll probably... Yeah, you're like indie spotlight on this. I really want to know what it was about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm, that's still in the works, but we'll we'll discuss what this basically is. So Streets of Rogue, <laughs> if you don't know, the best way to think about it is kind of think of uh, a mix of like Binding of Isaac, of Hotline Miami, of Do Sex, like the, all of those like elements from that combined so this is a roguelike as you can tell based on streets of rogue kind of figured yeah (laughs) um and essentially the story of it is kind of strange it's basically this crazy like mayor who comes in or something like that who takes over and like bans chicken nuggets so it's like this black market currency um And the point of the game is to go from one town to the next, so to speak. So you're going from these different areas. You start out in a normal town and you go to three different levels for each world. And then you go from the town to this more industrial kind of city. You then go to this outskirts, uh, just like this, the caves. Um, And then each one has their own specific things where there's different types of enemies, there's different types of scenarios or things that might come up. But the basics, uh, the basis of the game is essentially start out on a procedurally generated world. It's a small map uh, that consists of a few quests for you to do. And the really cool thing about this game is basically you don't know what quests you're going to get. Um, and you don't know what the map is going to look like or who is there or what type of perks are happening. Um, And in that, to make it even more of a mix-up, is you have over, like, I think it's 20 characters right now, and they're creating more as they go because this game still is technically in early access, which, although I don't like when games do that for extended periods of time, they do bi-weekly updates, so it's still constantly updating. But each character has its own ability. So some of the craziest ones, uh, like my favorite, is the zombie. And the zombie, you basically get to um, anyone that you kill or that gets killed from you will turn into a zombie. And then we'll just walk around the city and other people might attack it or it might attack others based on their preferences to zombies, basically. (laughs) Everyone is scared of you as a zombie. Their preferences of zombies? I know, it sounds sounds weird, but like some people are more (laughs) aggravated by them and will flat out attack them and others will just run away and get scared. So it depends. Oh, okay. I was like, somebody's just like, this too. This is a zombie. Well, yeah, no. Everyone is scared of the zombies, but it's like, (laughs) but so you also have a special ability where you can shoot like this, this poison and it basically takes some of your health but then when they die, they become a zombie and also become your follower. So you can have just this ragtag of like five zombies behind you who you walk into a building and then just start attacking people and then they become zombies. And then everyone else that is there, if they're in your way and your other zombies are running around, even if they're not in their party, they'll help you and they'll start attacking. So it's like, it, it's, it gets so chaotic and so fun because the, the general like quests that they have in it are um, usually go into one of the buildings and either take someone out, retrieve an item from them, uh, basically turn off this one system, break into some vault. There's a number of different things, but each one, the cool thing about this game is you could do it each differently. So uh, if you don't want to be a zombie who's just going in there and destroying a bunch of people, you might want to be a hacker. And a hacker, what they can do is they can hack different computers to open up doors or to unlock safes. Um, you can also hack refrigerators to run, which will 
quite literally run and will go through a building and destroy other things to open up doors for you basically or to kill people that you need (laughs) or you could do it a different way you could be a bartender and you could offer people drinks and get things that way there's and i didn't even realize this i was playing the other day i had no idea i always thought when you had a retrieve item quest you had to like kill them and take the item for you but i was a bartender gave a guy a drink and then realized there was a thing where i could just ask him like hey can i have that item and he was like yeah sure and he just gave it to me and i completed the quest so like you don't have to always do it the same way it's always going to be different and based on the characters you have you're always going to have a different way of going through it and even to make it another step on you know how you want to play the game is at the end of each level it'll give you a special trait that you can get when you level up so from that you'll get to like a a new perk that might be hey i'm going to have more defense if i have a following uh group with me of more than three at a certain time or hey i want my melee attack damage to do more or hey i want lasers to never see me basically because there's lasers in the game that will be like traps or things like that that you can just say oh i'm gonna take this perk and i'll never get affected by it so based on those that you get you'll also change up your play style so there's so much content in this game that it's like for the amount that it is it's it's like a no-brainer like i can't imagine this not being a good game for people who like roguelikes or like these kind of like defeat uh you know the the quests your own way so to speak because you can have a lot of different scenarios that will turn out differently just based on the character you're playing or how you foresee it um but it's it, it's it's a really good game man and it, it just it gets crazier and crazier like even to add on top of that you can make your own characters so there's all those perks and traits and you can say oh i want someone like that but maybe change a few things up and it it basically gives you a certain point value so you can't make a character that's crazy op but you can take certain perks like pros and cons and make a new character that you want based on how you really want to play the game so it's like it's really tailored to however you want to do this i really like it starts out (laughs) (laughs) Which is kind of a weird thing to say. I forget what it reminds me of, how they have the, like, weird little detached hands. Ah, yeah. I can't remember. Oh, uh, like, Prison Architect? No, not Prison Architect. I mean, it does, that game? it does look a little bit like that, but... Yeah, it's it's similar to that. What is the game where instead you play as the prisoner? Uh Oh, that's uh the Prison Escape game. Uh, what is it? I, the Escapist. Escapist, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, it, the art style reminds me a lot of that. Just how they have the like weird detached hands and they're these little like kind of rectangle people. It's pretty cool. I'm, uh, you kind of convinced me on this game. Yeah. Did, is it on consoles? That'll be the real convincer. It huh? is huh? on Switch. Oh, shit. Yeah. I thought you were going to say no. I was going to make fun of you. No, Damn. It is on huh? Switch. Yeah. Are you playing it on Switch or on PC? No, I've I've had it on PC since it came out back in 2017. Um, oh, it's, damn. It's one of those on and off games that I play because it's it's something where you really, like, you could just pick it up and it it's always different in, you know, like, the strategy because there's just so many characters. Like, I still have uh, a few characters that I haven't unlocked because there's new ones that are coming out. Like, there's a firefighter now that I don't have yet. And each one of them, like, it's it's basically um, you start off with, like, half the characters, and those characters all have these special quests for you to do, and um, sometimes you'll end up getting a new character based on those. So each one, and it'll tell you, which is nice. It doesn't, like, hide it from you. It's basically like, oh, do you want to uh, have the slave master as a playable character? Well, you'll have to buy four slaves to unlock this character or hey do you want to be a bartender then you're going to have to consume 10 alcoholic beverages in one playthrough oh wow on their uh on their steam page they list like play as over 20 and growing wildly different types of characters Mm -hmm. uh bartender scientist hacker gorilla um that's uh, yeah i think the hyper intelligent gorilla thing's really weird the gorilla is really <laughs> funny too because like you can't speak english so you can't talk to anyone so you'll go into like a room and people will just be like what like if you try to talk to like a shopkeep you'll they'll just be like i don't know what you're saying <laughs> like but, they just respond to you like it's normal to try to talk to a fucking gorilla no like 
they won't even talk to you. Your character will just say, I can't speak English. (laughs) (laughs) But then if you, then there's like a, there's a gorilla translator in the game. So if you get that, you can then talk English to people. This is obviously not based in reality. (laughs) No, not at all. But it's so good, man. This is not another sim? Come on. (laughs) There's so many, so many good characters and it's, it's, it's such a good game. You got to try it. I probably I'm so bad at roguelites. Honestly, roguelikes, roguelites. I'm just I'm so bad. Um, it talks about like in their Steam description, it talks about Nuclear Throne, which I really enjoyed. Um, and this game reminds me a lot of it, but just because of the standard like roguelike formula. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be so bad at it, but this seems so interesting. No, I like the different characters and everything. Even if you're that's bad really at cool. it, because that's one of the things that like. It, it does take some time to get used to, but even if you're bad at it, you'll find a character that melds with you, like that you can get farther in. And you'll see there are characters that are more OP in this. Like the zombie, I think, is the most OP character just because you can get so many people on your side. So if you walk into a room and it's like a bunch of people attack you, if you have five other zombies, you're more likely to get out unscathed, especially because the zombie, when you hit people, you gain HP. That's really cool. Yeah. It's kind of like a live steal. Yeah, kind of. Like, the, the drawback is he can't use any ranged weapons. He can only use melee. Like, he can't pick up a gun He's and use too it. dumb. Yeah, he's too <laughs> dumb. <laughs> so That's there's, awesome. Yeah, there's all kinds of little, like, perks and traits, like, negative or positive, that each character has. So it's 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 very well thought out. It seems so. Uh, my game I wanted to talk about, and it's a game that I was, yeah, I, I feel like just not enough people talk about it or talked about it when it came out. Um, and that's Momodora Reverie Under Moonlight. Um, I've talked about this before on the podcast when I was griping about, uh, me buying it physically on like limited run and having to wait for it. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, if you didn't know, it's a 2D Metroidvania. Um, it's got a pretty grueling difficulty if you want it to. If you guys are fans of, like, it's, it's kind of weird. If you're, if you're like, a weeb, you just really like, like, anime and such, or you just like anime girls and stuff, which I do really enjoy anime, um, but I like this game more for its, like, 16-bit art style um, and the Metroidvania gameplay than I do the, like, the weebiness of it. Um, you'd actually really like this game. It's a lot of fun. It's it's kind of a weird concept. You're essentially, like, this shrine maiden who uses a maple leaf to... Uh, like a maple leaf and a bow along with a bunch of different items uh you are trying to rid this kingdom of like this this evil curse um that well, it might eventually spread to the rest of the land um some interesting things i didn't know about this game before actually like kind of just looking into it um reverie under the moonlight is actually the fourth game in the series there are uh two of them that are originally only released on this kind of like i don't know if you've ever heard of this before it's called like uh itch.io yep it's apparently Mm -hmm. like yeah in indie games like website i actually didn't know anything about that i feel kind of weird about it considering i'm i have an indie games podcast yeah Yeah, you can find a lot of good uh demos for games that people are trying to make it's actually how i found uh the game horus uh, which is like a robot butler, like I don't know. It's it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of weird to explain, but the game's really cool. But I won't take up your time for it. Oh, you're good. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say the the first two Momodora games are actually over on the itch.io. They have definitely different art styles compared to Reverie Under the Moonlight. Um, and then the third and fourth game, which is Momodora Three and Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight, or just Under Moonlight, I guess. Um, no, it's Under the Moonlight. I just I just didn't include that. Um, <laughs> both of them are on Steam, but uh, Reverie is the only one that's actually on consoles right now. Um, it is. Is, and it's actually kind of nice with the exception of the Nintendo Switch. It's only $10 on uh, Steam, PS4, and Xbox One, but it's actually $14.99 on the Nintendo Switch. So that kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I just, I, I really like this game. I think it looks really good. It's a lot of fun. I'm not too deep into it. Um, and I'm actually kind of sad that I haven't got too far into it because of, I, I've just heard it has really, really dense lore and I'm a big mm. fan of lore. Um, it's something I constantly talk about in, uh, in, <laughs> when talking about Hollow Knight. So naturally, um, and the nicest thing I can say about this is the small bit of I, that I've played has actually got me so hooked that i want to play the other games in the momodora series i want to know more about them um they each have a female protagonist which is a different shrine maiden and from what i understand they all use these maple leaves which is really really cool That's interesting the the nicest thing about this one and i don't know about the other ones is uh and like i've said i'm really bad at games so this one actually has like a difficulty setting so unlike games uh so when people constantly say like souls like games, um, it generally refers to the like really hard, but fixed difficulties. Um, and this is people refer to it as a souls like game, but it actually does have like, you can adjust the difficulty, um, on normal, which is just the standard gameplay. It's actually still somewhat challenging, but you can like turn it up to hard. And once you beat it on hard, you can actually go on insane, which from some videos that I've seen, um, your health bar actually shrinks to like a minuscule amount. Like you get hit once and you're dead. And I just think that's so awesome. Anybody looking for like the the challenge of just a really hard video game, definitely check out Momodora. Um, yeah, you, like I said, you could pick it up on basically any console. I'm specifically just talking about Reverie Under the Moonlight, but you you can of course check out the other few. Um, I I just I really like this game dude i i didn't expect to enjoy it so much um the developer is called bomb service and from what i've seen the uh the only games they've developed are actually the momodora games i believe they may have developed another game but i forget off the top of my head um but this series has actually existed since 2010 which is i mean they've released the four games uh one was in 2010 two in 2011 three in 2014 and four was in uh 2016 that's when the last one came out on all the consoles but i really like it um if you guys want to check out a video on it that i actually really like there's a guy on youtube called snowman gaming um he does these really cool videos like a he has a series called good game design that I really like where he just talks about games with good game design and why he believes they have it. Um, and he also does like review esque videos where he did one on Momodora and it's, it's a very good video. I'd check it out. I really liked it. Um, but yeah, I just, I hope more people talk about this and play this game. Cause I constantly like hear people talk about how much they like uh, they like Metroidvanias. They love pixel platformers, but I, I've only talked to like two people that know anything about this game. <laughs> and it's kind of weird to me, especially because like, I don't know, I, I'm assuming it's cause it's kind of like anime girly. It's, it's definitely like weeby. Like, um, <laughs> literally i picked up a health power up and she like spins around like sailor moon yeah. it's it's super cute and <laughs> it was like super funny i i'm looking at some of the videos on it i like that it looks a little slow as far as like the movement of it which I, it can be which I, it, it can be slow or like super fast it just depends yeah but i think yeah it definitely seems like that's intentional like there's weight to the actions of the character um but it, it looks really cool i like how in the in the video there was a part where the enemy's throwing like a dagger at you and you actually smack it away which i think is really cool that they wrote that in as like a, an option um, just because that's obviously one of those things of like, if you have no health bar, it's because you have to be smart about the way you're actually playing the game. Um, but it, it looks really cool. Yeah. You do have a dodge roll. You can, you can dodge or apparently you can deflect projectiles. I'm not good enough at the game to realize that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it looks like there's a, there's some, some skill to it uh but but no it, it looks really cool i like how there's a bunch of different unique bosses uh it's, it's a little weird the one with the uh it's just like a giant lady and you're 
attacking her boobs it looks yeah, like just huge anime boobs yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was kind of trying to avoid talking about that when i was talking about how weeby it is <laughs> I was yeah like, it's definitely dips its toes in fan service yeah you're basically just beating up her boobs yeah i was like <laughs> i was looking through the video and i saw it and i was like oh okay and then i scrolled down and then like the about this game on the steam page that's just yeah. the first thing you see is a gif of her just smacking just her boobs her big anime boobs and she's just whacking them with a maple leaf <laughs> little strange but but honestly i have seen this in the past and i've always saw this as something that i'm like oh i should pick it up when it's like you know on sale or something for steam because it does look like a game that i could get behind i just don't know how i don't know how into the weighted movement i would be but i mean if you're saying it's a lot of fun i might have to check it out I was actually kind of surprised. I, I too felt like it seemed like a little bit weighted, but it's not too bad. It's not like a platformer where you feel like you might be running underwater. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's pretty tight, I would say. And I like how in boss battles, it actually like, I'm not sure if this is just on like the, uh, the normal difficulty. If you ramp it up, I'm assuming this goes away. Um, but it actually kind of telegraphs where the bosses are going to hit, mm. but you're a fan of like the, the hard, the like intense <laughs> difficulty. I am not because i'm exceptionally bad um so i like i i really just want this for the lore and the story and i really like the pixel art mm -hmm. um plus i gotta beat up those anime boobs dude i mean I gotta yeah, get to somebody's gotta show them who's boss you know what i'm saying right right um it's got pretty great reviews uh it's it's very positive uh out of 500 it's all reviews um it's got 5359 reviews on steam uh with a very positive review score uh it's got an 82 percent on metacritic apparently this is what the steam page says and I, I haven't really checked it out i haven't seen a lot of people like i said i haven't seen a lot of people talk about it which really sucks <laughs> especially considering like it's been out for three years Right. And it's on all the consoles, but just nothing. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, it looks it looks fun. Uh, I would say to pick it up if you're into this kind of style game. The Weeby Games. The Weebos. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to our last segment of the podcast, where I make Josh feel uncomfortable. But today Indeed. it is not an uncomfortable uh, uncomfortable question. I actually just want to know if uh, if you had the chance to gain the ability to breathe underwater or fly, which one would you choose? With the added caveat that you can only fly as fast as you can swim. This came up when I worked, uh, I worked at like a grocery store called Albertsons a few years ago mm -hmm. and I randomly like asked, uh, like I, I randomly asked my coworker this question just cause I was curious, like what he'd say. Um, and he went with the breathing underwater. I went with flying and, uh, we had asked a couple customers and, there was like it was obviously weighted toward flight because you could get around so fast that's why we had to add the added caveat that you can only fly as fast as you can swim otherwise like people always chose the like flying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the ocean freaks me out dude i would never so like nah so okay well yeah that that obviously answers the question so were you <laughs> I, I, that's what i was gonna be like are you still for flying now with the caveat yeah dude that you can only go as fast i think specifically yeah, yeah i mean i don't really want to be aquaman so he kind of sucks what <laughs> you don't want to be aquaman no nah, man did I you aquaman. know it's dc's highest grossing movie dude oh yeah he's pretty Jeez. gross let me tell you um nope <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know though because breathing on the water would still be pretty dope but you can't like I think well, can't really okay. use that to your advantage all the time. Uh, yeah, it's like how much <laughs> would you use that versus flying? Like that's why, I, like even if I only could go as fast as I could swim, like I could swim okay. I think, I think I'd be fine. I think I could still. go. I'm not like who say you say bolt in the water, but I could, I could still, you know. Yeah, I could yeah, still yeah, fly yeah. pretty. I fast. think I would still pick fly. <laughs> I think we need to, we need to somehow put another extra pro to this underwater part because it seems too heavy heavily weighted on fly 
Yeah, that's why I had to. The, the caveat is only to flying yeah. because it's just it's just kind of weighted in a weird way. In my head, I came up with this weird mythology that like years later, if the world was like overcome by water, um, those that chose to live in the ocean would actually evolve like past those that chose to fly, um, <laughs> because they would like just, there would be no predators. You would have no reason to evolve. If you chose flight, like, yeah, there are birds, but birds have to land eventually. Mm -hmm. Technically, if you just chose to fly, you do not. I mean, well, that's the thing is you'd have to be like, you can only fly as fast as you can swim. And you can only fly for a certain duration. Yeah, like you would get exhausted. Like you can't, it's not just flying like, ooh, I'm flying. It's like I'm fucking whapping Whapping, flapping my wings. <laughs> You're whapping. I'm whapping over here. No, this, this is not a not an R-rated podcast. It's not that kind of a podcast. <laughs> other than talking about anime boobs. I mean, yeah, but I'm not talking about whapping to them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I am now. But hey, you know, yeah, I think I think if you it, fell into it, if we put, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're just so tempting, you know. Um, I think if we put the the caveat of if I could only fly as fast and I could only like, like basically the same thing. Like you would have the same limitations of swimming. So you would get tired. Yeah, you get tired. Yeah, you would get tired and you could only go that fast because like that way it'd be cool, but you'd be like, all right, I can fly for like what a couple feet. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to land again. (laughs) Like this is a big pain in the ass. Yeah. Cause then it's like, then it's like the cool factor of like the same reason of, you know, what are you really going to benefit from it? But it's a, pretty cool party trick <laughs> that would be pretty dope i know and you could act like you're walking on water you oh, know what i mean true. yeah until yeah. you get too tired and then you would drown then that's, that's solid then you would have wished you picked breathe underwater so there's all now you're added the caveat that you just can't swim you're like yeah you're dead <laughs> sorry <laughs> Well, no, but if you're so tired, you're not going to be able to keep yourself afloat and then you're going to I mean, I guess that's fair. You just yeah. don't know how to tread water did you Did know you that play? Navy SEALs learn how to, uh, like, inflate their pants to keep them afloat? Really? How do they learn yeah. how to inflate their pants? There's, like, like, this weird technique they use where they trap air in their pants to keep them afloat. Really? I learned about that, like, ten years ago. It's never come up until now. That's crazy. It's so I've weird. I've never heard yeah. of that. That's interesting. Really? Yeah, I've yeah, never I heard Yeah, I heard about it on, like, the Discovery Channel or some weird shit. Oh, I, don't, I don't remember where, that's but strange. it's... Yeah, it's wow. odd. Fun facts with Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, maybe someday you'll learn how to inflate your pants. Uh, it just sounds like I'm farting in them, but no thanks. That's fair. <laughs> that is very fair. So if you guys enjoyed this episode of the podcast, uh, we post this each and every week, uh, each and every Friday specifically. You can pick it up on all sorts of podcast services, including Spotify, which is really, really cool. Um, or at least I think it is. Uh, we run you through all the indie games news, and we just pretty much talk about indie games in all shapes sizes and anime boobs you know what i mean josh Mm -hmm. double d sizes (laughs) those are some huge anime boobs i really can't get over that yeah i didn't want to talk about it but once we went into it yeah it's like it's pretty intense it's like mount lady size anime boobs it's crazy if you're a my hero academia fan um (laughs) yeah that's about it for us if you guys would like to chat with us outside of the show you can follow me at hide legion on twitter and you can follow josh at the underscore george 90 and of course if you want to check out our written content like josh's indie spotlights you can check those out on parallaxmedia.one is the website that we record this podcast for it's super nice um if you want to find us on youtube as well it is just parallax media super easy to find uh thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the podcast and i hope you guys have a great day Bye, guys.